It's with yeah. Barry Money and you're from DC Strategy. So in a nutshell, what does DC Strategy do? DC Strategy is uh, an organization that creates generational wealth for our clients. We help our clients build franchise systems, find franchisees, establish the solid legal and corporate structures. And we also take our brands internationally and we bring international brands to the Australian and New Zealand markets. And it's a great thing to just have a quick chat with you. We're lucky to do it because um, you see a lot of brands and a lot of different strategies and stuff like that. So maybe do you want to comment a bit about what you see from an outsider looking in on the Jim's brand and what are your thoughts about that? Uh, well, look, um, full disclosure, I worked at Jim's group for a while. You and I were colleagues. so. Uh, I had a great uh, time while I was at Jim's. Jim's is a fantastic brand. Jim's has got the market covered from the point of view of a number of divisions, 52 divisions at the moment. I think the thing that sets Jim's apart is its absolute dedication to customer excellence. And uh, from my point of view, uh, that's driven from the top. That's driven from a founder who is absolutely dedicated to customer service. And the policies, the procedures, the training, the legal agreements all enshrine the absolute uh, commitment to delivering great customer service. Now, a real cheeky one for you. What's the division that we should do but we don't do? Is there anything that comes to the top of the mind? If you were gonna go DC straight, we're gonna go and take any, you can take the Jimmy's brand and do anything we want with it. What would be something or a service you'd be looking at doing? I actually think that there's a piece of the puzzle missing in gyms. You have a huge network of services that use specific products. And those products are created by manufacturers that um, want to offer those products to all of those divisions. But the glue that's missing is Jim's couriers. Jim's couriers should be setting up the monopoly distribution rights between the manufacturers, milk run base, to all of the different franchisees, 5,000 franchisees throughout the country, delivering to uh, those franchisees. It's an internal service that could provide to external clients, but what you've got there is the economies of scale to collect from manufacturers and then deliver to uh, territories and franchisees, 5,000 of them throughout the country. That's a good idea. If you do see it around, we'll give you a trailing commission. I'm sure there Jim has will. to be a trailing <laughs> I'm commission. Sure Jim will share. has to be a trailing commission on that. Jim, this one's for you. <laughs> I expect 10% trailing commission on that one. Checks in the mail. Excellent. But, but I was going to say, I want us to talk about you did a really good talk yesterday. Yeah. And you can tell it's a good talk because there was no one at the start, but you brought people in and it started filling up. Yep. So I listened, loving what you said. And, you said some really good stuff about franchise, uh, about selecting the franchise and about some red flags, about what are some good indicators. Yeah. So maybe you want to talk to people, even though this is not a gym's plug, but what are some good indicators to you or some things they should be looking at, which is a sign of a good franchise system? Yeah. The first three things that always strike me are uh, advice, values alignment, and value proposition. Let's talk about advice. Usually as a business person wanting to buy into a system, you're going it alone. What you actually need to do is find great advisors. The franchisor wants to sell to you, but does that franchisor spend time disclosing to you, waltz and all, everything about that brand and that organization? I think this is something that Jim's group does amazingly well through its training, yeah? but. Uh, independent of the franchisor, I think you need good advisors around you. So DC Strategy, for example, we spend a lot of time understanding our clients and understanding what they really want to do and helping clients find the right franchise for them. So getting the right advisor, that means a financial advisor, that means a strategic and business advisor, might actually also mean kind of a life coach type of advisor. Where do you want to go with your own personal and professional direction? So first one is advice. The second one for me is probably the most important from my personal perspective. And this is values alignment. What sort of belief system do you have? What sort of intrinsic values do you have as a human? And 
Do you get validation and do you get that reflected back to you from your business partner, the franchisor or the company into which you're entering? Um, if your values aren't validated and reflected back to you, then you've got to question yourself whether you'll be happy in that business. It's not all about the money. So when you're having those discussions, anytime you have a gut reaction, you have to pay attention to that um, to make sure that the franchisor can enunciate what their values are and they're in alignment with who you are as a person. And the third thing actually does come down to the money. When you're looking at putting um, your redundancy package on the line, as I said yesterday, or a capital investment, you've got to make sure that you have got a real clear understanding of the return on investment, the payback period, the assumptions, the full disclosure around the forecast of the P&L from the franchise or to you as a franchisee. And you've got to make sure that you're happy with that payback period. You've got to make sure that the work hours that are under the assumptions for that P&L, you're happy with those work hours. Because fundamentally, you're going to work. You can't be an absentee landlord. You've actually got to put your elbow to the, to the metal, so to speak. You've got to get stuck in and you've got to work really hard. So have a good look at that payback period but be willing to go in and work really hard for it. And another thing you said, which I thought was really interesting and resonated with people, and that really brought me in, was we were talking about recession and about, yeah. you know, about yeah. people all have that conception where I'm safe in employment. Yeah. Whereas you were saying, showing no. no. So no. do you want to talk a bit about that? No, look, you know, it's, it's a false economy at the moment, right? People, employees at least, think that if I stay here because there's a labour shortage, they can't fire me and they will have to pay me more. At this point in time, that may actually be correct. But in fact, if you think about this over a longer period of time, inflation and interest rates have already eroded your salary package. If you've got a home loan or if you're paying rent, and I presume that 99.9% 90 .9 of the population have a home loan or they're paying rent, you are already on the back foot. So you need to leap ahead in terms of your financial earning capability in order to be able to stay afloat, right? That's the first point. The second point is wages aren't growing. Over a period of time, if you look at wage growth, the last quarter, it was only 0.8%. Over the last year, something like 3.3%. If you look at the last quarter inflation at 7.8% and wage growth at 0.8%, you're 7% behind. So you've got to leap ahead. Superannuation, tanking, it tanked last year. You, certain funds lost thousands of dollars and certain clients of those funds lost thousands of dollars. So your risk of staying in employment is actually heightened over a longer period of time. What you actually need to do is think smartly about what your revenue streams are. One revenue stream is starting your own business. One revenue stream is joining a franchised network. And that's where we get to the decision. The decision for that particular selection is franchises have a greater success rate than startup businesses. So why not join something that's proven and profitable to at least leap ahead from a financial earning capability point of view? Awesome, that's it. Thank you very much, Barry.